Well, watch this. We're going to have little dynamite swallow the sword. Watch this. Here, give me the sword and let's do the whole routine. It's 18 and a half inches long from the point to the hilt to the handle. But it's long enough when little dynamite, amazing grace, swallows the sword, it reaches from the courthouse to the post office all the way down to her appetite. Watch how the young lady swallows the sword. Over the lips, past the gums, look out stomach. Here it comes. Well, come on in. It's showtime right now. Hurry along. Go on in and see what they're doing. Come on in, guys. You're going to like it already. You're going to go inside. You're going to see all the divas of danger like the lady knife thrower. She throws knives around a human target. She cracks a whip just like Indiana Jones, just with nicer legs. You're going to see the pain-proof man lifting heavy weights with fish hooks in his eyes and in his ears. You're going to see a world champion sword swallower, Red Stewart. He swallows swords, sabers, and bayonets. And today, inside, he's going to take a car axle from a Model T Ford and it goes straight down his throat. It's a family-friendly show. Nobody's going to jump out at you or try to grab you. We're not here to scare you. We're here to entertain you. All right, Tommy. If you could start out just by counting to 10 for me, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, this is one of our snakes. This is an eight-foot-long boa constrictor. And his name is Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, he has a nice name, he's a nice snake. And uh, he's actually pretty new, but he's working out really good. He's easy to work with. So, so who founded World of Wonders? The World of Wonders was founded by the king of the sideshows, Mr. Ward Hall. And, um, and he joined the circus when he was 14 and he's 82 years old this year. And he's been in show business his whole life. And uh, this show has been traveling the country for maybe 60 years in one form or another. And how long have you been a part of it? I've been with the show for about eight years. Uh, the World of Wonders is uh, the world's largest traveling circus sideshow. It's a big variety show with 12 live acts performing on the stage. And uh, we provide like a family friendly show uh, at fairgrounds and, and state fairs and things like that. Uh, a little bit of everything. I think largely the people who come to see the show nowadays have never really seen anything like this before and they don't really know what to expect. Um, I think that almost sometimes it works against us because they maybe have seen a movie or something that like a horror movie about the sideshow and it's not really like that. It's, it's like a family uh, entertainment. So uh, we just try to, we present the sideshow as it is and we hope they, they enjoy it. I don't know, whatever they decide, so I still got about 20, 25 minutes, so. Yeah, sure. If that's all right with you, sir. Yeah, sure, sure. Wonderful. There you are. Why don't you come back around to this side? Right. This is Devry. Who? Devry. Strange name, go ahead. Yep. And this is Marlis. That's even worse. <laughs> Yeah, don't ask me why. Okay, we won't. Okay. All right, so you've got, so tell me what you have there. Well, I have a Model A or a Model T Ford car axle. We use them today in the carnival business to hold our tents down and hold our battle line down. This is an old one. It was originally owned by a guy by the name of Arthur Plumoff. He was the first person to ever swallow a car axle. He retired in 54. Okay, and you're gonna swallow it. And I'm going to swallow it. Let's see that. Amazing, amazing. Thank you. So, do you mind if I talk to you for a little while? Huh? Do you mind if I talk to you for a little oh, while? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. So, how long have you been doing that? <laughs> I'm the oldest sideshow performer as well as the oldest sword swallower. I've been swallowing swords 45 years. Uh, but do you mind if I ask, how old are you? I'm 61. 61. I started off, it was more economics than anything else. I was hitchhiking around the country. I landed up in New Orleans during the Mardi Gras season of 67 and uh, I met a gypsy that had her own little sideshow what we call the grind show or five in one 
This that we have here is a 10 in one, 10 acts, well we have up to 16 here. Uh, but she had a grind show with five acts and uh, she says, well, after Mardi Gras, they're gonna let you go, Red, because I was working on the ride. She says, how would you like to learn how to swallow swords, eat fire, dance in fire, and hot coals? I said, why not? My name is Lauren McGregor. My stage name is Ginger Be Good. I've been performing Bull Whip since 2008, and I've been performing in general since 2006. How did you get started doing this? Uh, well, I came out and worked for the show. I found an ad on Craigslist. I ended up here. Um, I had started performing burlesque in Boston, Massachusetts, and I found the ad for the show. I came out. I worked for a few months and. I, I wasn't really sure about it. I went back home, I got my day job, and uh, I got a call like about a year and a half later saying that there was a Wild West show and a man needed an assistant for a knife throwing act and some bullwhip stuff. And I went for it and he used me as his assistant for two seasons. And after about four months, he started teaching me whips and knives and trick roping. And uh, I just went from there and ever since I've been doing the acts and I love it. Well, it just took a lot of practice. I mean, I was trained uh, by the owner of the Wild West show that I worked for, and I spent about 40 hours a week training specifically knives and whips so that I could perform them in his show. And it took me about six months of 40 hours a week to get the whip to crack consistently every time that I attempted it. And once I got it to crack, then getting that precise with it took even more time and it was just repetition really like with anything just repeating it over and over again same with all the other acts the whip travels 750 miles an hour when it makes the pop sound so I mean you know just moving it around your body and learning different cracks I mean you can I mostly I hit myself on the back of the legs when I bring it up and then bringing it back down it, it will it will catch me and it's leather so it will cut you stand here and hold it straight out to your okay. left okay <laughs> And if anything kicks up, it's just the mulch. All right, you guys tell me when you're ready. Whenever you're ready. Okay. I'm ready. Thank you, guys. I always wanted to join the circus and, and travel, and uh, I learned how to swallow swords and things like that. And then there was an ad on the internet saying that this show was hiring, and I answered the ad, I've been here ever since. I never really hurt myself bad. Uh, learning, there was some minor mishaps, and I used to let people pull the sword out in the show, and I had a, a, a little girl push it in more. So that was like my one injury, but I didn't have to go to the hospital or anything, it was, I was okay. It hurt. I learned from, I learned probably the wrong way to learn sword swallowing. I learned from books, and from watching other people do it. I, I couldn't find a teacher for a long time. It took me a long time to learn how to do it. And then once I got that down, then everything kind of, it was easier to learn the other things, to find people to help me learn how to eat fire. And from working here, I, I've done all the acts in the show almost. And um, you, you learn a lot on the road, that's for sure. I learned sword swallowing on Good Thursday of 1967. It took me four tries, about maybe five to 10 minutes to learn to swallow swords. That was the last thing that I learned. I learned all the acts of fire manipulation, the fire and glass dancing, sword ladder, bed of nails, you know, uh, things of that sort, uh, bed of swords, things of that nature, and went on back, so. I taught more people the art of sword swallowing than anybody else in recorded history. I taught 33. That's amazing. So that's a third of the sword swallowers that are still performing the act. Although two or three of them retired because they did something crazy or stupid, and they injured themselves, which I do know a few of them have, that I taught them. Uh, I'm not stupid. I'm crazy, I can do things, but I do things safely. I mean, out of the six Guinness World Records I have, I have the record of by swallowing 52 swords all at the same time. So, you know, that is not something to sneeze at. <laughs> six, what are your other world records? Well, I was uh, one of 20, 
that swallowed 50 swords. I was one of nine that swallowed 52. And at that same time, I swallowed 25, and that was in 2005. And that was breaking a 105-year-old record. Then in 2009, right here at this state fair, on the stage of, of this sideshow, I broke that record again by matching what the nine of us did by swallowing 52. Then in 2010, on International Sword Swallowers Day, we got another videotape of it with certificate of appendice, you know, and all that other stuff that, that's required by swallowing the 52 again. But between that time of 25 and 52, I increased it, 33 swords, 47 swords. And, and nobody can break the record because I just keep break, you know, breaking my own record. So, you know, I'm gonna, people say I'm in a class all of my own. Oh, well, uh, this, this is one of our biggest fairs that we play. And we're open from 10.30 in the morning till midnight. We run all day, so we basically wake up, put all the, the big banners up, work all day and put the banners down and go to sleep. That's, that's it. Maybe run to the grocery store or something. Hair, makeup, costume is the main thing. Performing and then, you know, remembering to eat because it is long hours of performing. Other than that, um, I honestly can't think of anything. It's mostly just wake up, shower, prep yourself for the show. Uh, we run all day long at the fair, so we do sometimes 20 to 30 shows a day and every audience is different and it's kind of, I, I like working so much, you, you get good and you get to meet all different kinds of audiences, you learn how to become a better performer. What's the most memorable thing that's ever happened to you because of this one? Um, well, most memorable thing? Um, I don't know if there's one memorable moment, I would say, that since I've joined the show, uh, it's definitely been like my dream come true, and, and that's a memorable thing that I get to travel around and do what I always wanted to do. I, it's really hard to say what the most memorable thing is. I think that just the people that I've met along the way and the friends, because a lot of relationships that you make when you're traveling are so short, so you really have a memory of a lot of the people that you get, that you really become come to like. So I feel like the most memorable thing is just the, the friendships and the relationships that I've made with certain people that have been very inspiring to me along the way and have made me want to go further with it. And I mean, those, those good times with them and even just the short conversations that maybe I had are very, very important memories to me and, and I'll never forget that stuff. Wonderful. So, do you, so you're, the, you're the oldest one still performing. Do you see, do you see ever stop? If I stop, I'll fall off the stage dead. You never fall on the stage dead. I will walk off the stage or I will drop off the stage dead. I'm not retiring. From Camden, New Jersey, we have Spidora, the spider girl, who has a normal human head. She has a beautiful face. But from the neck down, I have to warn you, her body's not normal, it's not beautiful, it's not human. She has the body of a hairy, eight-legged, tarantula spider. The weirdest thing to come out of New Jersey since Snooky. And when you meet her, talk to her and ask her your question. She'll answer you. Now, Grace gave me the signal. She's ready. So we're going to let you in first. You line up right over here. And while the music... Okay. I'm going to take this nail, which is a 200-penny barn nail. I'm going to drive it into the center of the head. Now, that's a little bit of a play with words, but bear with me. I'm stating a fact. I am going to drive this nail into the center of the head. The point of this nail will be in the center of my head. The head of this nail will be just outside my head. Now watch. One more? Sure. Oh, you're a sick puppy. You gotta be from Minnesota. Oh, you're all from Minnesota. What did I say? Drive the nail into the center of the head? I think I did that. Where is the point of the nail? Now this is where you're gonna get your education because I'm gonna remove this nail in slow motion and show you how deep that nail made it into the head. Let's see. Front view, center of the head. Side view, slow motion. In the center of the head. 
Hold it, wait a minute, I did it again. I knocked a screw loose. The carnies out there give me a new nickname. They call me Screwy Louie. They swear up and down I got a screw loose. Sometimes I agree with them, so I oblige them, get them sick, and tighten the screw back up. It does go in by hand, by the way, but you really don't need a hammer, or in this case, a spoon to drive it in. But it does create a real nice special sound effect, doesn't it? But a lot of people think, well, what is a spoon for? Well, here's one thing you could do. Next time you go to a banquet to your in-laws, especially the ones you never want to see again, you'd never do it during the dinner, the 12 course dinner, like Thanksgiving or Christmas or Easter. You do it during dessert. Now, what I like best is doing it when they're serving that fruit cake that's been being passed back and forth through the family for the past millennia or two. You know, the one that could be used as a hockey puck, you know, and be harder than a hockey puck. But what you do is you decide to eat your dessert with your spoon. Now, if this doesn't get you kicked out of the house, this indefinitely will. Boy, that was sweet bread. And that is a human blockhead. Thank you. Thank you so much, Red. That was phenomenal. Thank you. I just have one thing here.